Right, hello everyone. Welcome back to our series uh, on Dr. Dave Regis's suggested openings repertoire. And we are very nearly at the end. In fact, this is going to be the penultimate episode. And what are we looking at? Well, we've been looking at possible replies for black to d4. Well, in fact, we've been looking at replies for black to anything except e4, as it turns out. And Dr. Dave has already given us the Tarash uh, set up as a possibility, so doing this very quickly. And uh, we've had the Tartakova set up, whoops, as well recommended as a possibility. So just highlighting the moves on the board. And uh, today we're going to have another possible setup. And I'm, I have to say, this is one that I play a lot, so it makes me kind of happy. Uh, I'm just going to go to the board setup, because really I just want to show you what Black's going to do with their pieces. Um, and the Dutch stone wall involves this. F5, although you might find that in some of the games this pawn will go first, so there's a bit more flexibility. White doesn't necessarily know what you're playing if you go with E6 first. And D5. The knight will go to that square. The bishop will go to this square, although sometimes this pawn will go first. If there's a white knight here, you don't want it to come down here and annoy your bishop. So sometimes this pawn first. Your castle, pretty much always, obviously. And uh, you'll put the knight in the middle of the board, preferably on e4, and then bring this knight out. OK, fine. Um, what's going on here? Well, the first thing is you've got a very, very solid position in the centre of the board. Very, very solid. You're not likely to lose super quickly playing this as black. Uh, unless you make a horrible blunder, you're going to be pretty safe. Uh, what else can we say? Um, some suggestions. Should you ever find that white takes this knight, you are going to recapture with the, uh, excuse me, sorry, uh, with the F pawn. That's gone. We don't want that there. You're going to recapture this way uh, rather than this way. And the reason for that is dead simple. You've now opened your rook up towards where the enemy king is likely to be. Pretty logical stuff. If there's a white pawn here, and you're likely to come up against this kind of setup quite a bit from white because, you know, D pawn players, this is what they'll do. If this is captured, you are going to capture this way. If you possibly can. Every now and again, you might have to go the other way because circumstances, but this way, if you possibly can. And the reason for that is that this now unblocks this bishop to an extent. OK, and one of the tricky bits, one of the downsides of the stonewall defense is because all these pawns are on light squares, your light square bishop can get a bit stuck. And so what's our basic plan? Well, we're usually going to want to put a knight in the middle of the board on e4 because it's very, very strong potentially there, looking towards where the enemy king might be. It's a very nice piece. Uh, we're probably going to bring the other knight around to support it. One of the knights might go to g4 to look at the enemy king and then look at the bishop pointing that way with them. You're going to bring your queen to attack. Now, depending on where the white minor pieces are, the bishops and the knights, you might go straight there. You might go this way. You might decide to stop on g3. You might go to f3. Um, there's just lots of possibilities, but the point is the queen's going to come across to get involved. This rook, like I said, if this happens, is already involved from the F file, but I've played some games where occasionally you can bring the rook up this way to point at the enemy king. Okay, um, I've got some games where the board's got really closed up and I've been able to play g4 and start throwing pawns at the enemy king, maybe hide my I just my king just disappeared then <laughs> it's because I'm using the, the board set up instead of an actual game at the minute just to show you the ideas could hide my king in the corner and, and say throw this pawn up the board um the downside back to all of this there is a downside is this bishop as I say this bishop here on the light squares can get a bit blocked in there's no getting away from that it can be a bit stuck and of course if this one gets a bit stuck this rook is also a bit stuck so maybe they end up these two pieces doing not very much except defending over this side of the board. And that's why we're very, very happy. Usually in this setup, if white trades here, because it's beginning to help us get this bishop out, isn't it? Um, another thing that you might occasionally do with the Dutch stone wall um, is consider playing this move here. So pushing the pawn forward to break the white center. So say I, I do this, white might swap, and then maybe we'll take with the knight. 
maybe we'll take with the bishop just depends but probably with the knight and actually this is now pretty cool because now the bishop isn't completely trapped as well so okay and i'm not again saying this is absolutely perfect no opening is but it's a system set up that's very very easy to learn pretty solid and uh yeah you'll get some decent games with it so that said let's have a look now i'm not going to do this in two short tiny episodes dr dave's given us six games but the longest one's only 15 moves so we're going to go straight through it and our first one is between uh, i think it's edward grunfeld and carlos torre so two really famous grandmasters actually in chess history or master players from this game's 1925. Torre has the black pieces and he goes with e6 instead of f5 first. And this is not a bad idea because now white doesn't know if you're going to play any of these moves. And actually, when you're really quite an advanced player, you might even learn that one, play the, um, the English um, uh the queen's indian or the english defense but anyway the, the point is this gives you a bit more flexibility if you go f5 straight away then white knows what you're doing um in our game knight f3 is played f5 played so now white knows it's the dutch defense goes for g3 to bring the bishop out here this is very common and quite playable nothing wrong with that at all uh knight to f6 bishop to g2 d5 castles Bishop to d6 is played by black. Now, because there's no white knight here to jump to this square, bishop d6 is okay. If this knight had already been here, you'd want to play c6 first just to stop the knight harassing your bishop. Uh, but here, that's okay. And c4 is played and c6 is played. Do you remember what I said in the intro? If this takes, go with this one so that your bishop actually has some kind of future. Um, queen c2 played by white. Castles by black, b3, and here's our move knight to e4. Now, just a quick point here. If you bring the knight out first here, uh, I'm not saying it's a disaster or anything, but you kind of can't take back with this pawn uh, in some of these positions. You'll actually be all right with it here because thinking about it, if that's a queen, that's not going to work so well because you've got a discovered attack and it'll be fine. But just be a little careful in this sort of position that this knight doesn't stop the bishop defending f5. But here it's absolutely uh, wouldn't be a problem. But knight e4 is what Torre played, fine. Bishop to b2, and now knight to d7, because obviously this pawn, there's something in the way. Knight to e5 from white, because absolutely, if black's got a nice square in the middle of the board, white says, why shouldn't I? Queen to f6, and this position is basically level the computer might say a tiny edge to white but then you're going to get a tiny edge to white from a sensibly played opening anyway because they go first and plus 0.4 is nothing really the the point of that advantage is it's just because the computer sees that this bishop might be a bit blocked in that's all it is but the position itself is very very level uh, and then a move from white that isn't losing it's just odd it just looks like it's opening up your king and maybe weakening the dark squares around the king. And that's why the computer has sort of said, yeah, OK, still level. He's not a big fan, doesn't hate it. But it does give Torre playing black the chance to set an interesting trap. And instead of taking away or sorry, moving away their attack knight, Torre just plays knight takes in the middle of the board. And this is still fine at the moment if both sides play correctly it's level and um what probably should happen here from white is they should either take the knight with the pawn or move this pawn here and just swap everything off and be fine but um, i'm afraid the player of the white pieces got tempted by this move because it looks does it not as though this pawn is forking two pieces so black's got two pieces attacked and a third one there that doesn't look like it can be good. And yet the computer is saying minus seven, saying black's winning uh, handsomely. So why? What on earth is going on here? Um, I'm going to give you the next move that black plays and then I'll set you a little bit of a puzzle. So bishop here, check. Well, that saves one of the pieces. And um, uh, Grunfeld plays the king to the corner. Now, there's no point in putting anything in the way because you just take it, by the way. You just would have taken it as black. So, OK, king to the corners where it is. But the thing is, um, yeah, this is now 
Uh, actually, he should have played Rook here. Just I'm just sort of looking at the position in my head and thinking, yeah, Rook there was the only way to survive, I think. But the point is, he went to the corner, and now we have mate in three. Mate in three for Black from this position. So if you want to try and find it, uh, hit the pause button now. Otherwise, I'll carry on in three, two, and one. And the lovely winning move is knight takes pawn check. So this square is covered by the bishop. So the only move that you can play as white here to escape check is pawn takes knight. But that, the consequence of that is now this line is open. The queen jumps onto the h file, we check, and there's no escape. You just have to put the bishop in the way to block. But then the queen takes and is guarding these squares. The bishop's guarding this one and the king is doomed. Okay. Um, just out of curiosity, in this position, am I right that rook f2 is about the only move? Or rook f2 is still awful. Uh, e3 is still awful. E3 and then rook f2. Yeah, so it's look at this. It's, it's dreadful. <laughs> yeah. So, OK. And if I go back uh, one more move to this position, just to just to make the point. Yeah, the computer, I said it would probably recommend c5. Um, yeah. OK, fine. So it wasn't losing for white, but it certainly was once they played this move here. So that's a, a nice start for our Dutch stone wall. The next game is only going to be six moves long because white actually resigns on move six. So let's just have a quick look at this one. We've got Dani against Linda from Hasloch in 1997. No idea who these two are, but let's see how their game went. Uh, just turn the lines off. Uh, C4 and F5. There's our Dutch defence. G3, Knight F6, Bishop G2, D5. There's our stone wall. B3 and C6. That could have put the bishop here, but it really doesn't matter. You're going to put it there shortly in this opening anyway. Um, except that in this position, white comes up with a cunning plan. And the plan is excellent. The execution not so much. And the point of White's plan is that if white, uh, all the black pawns are on white squares and this bishop's awful, but this bishop is quite strong, why not try to force this bishop off the board? So White has done this with the intention of playing bishop to a3 to force black to swap off their better bishop. So White plays bishop to a3. The plan is excellent. The execution, dreadful. Um, if you want to press pause at this point and have a go at working out why the computer has suddenly decided that what was a level position is now minus three, please do so and see if you can work out what black should play. Otherwise, we'll carry on in three, two and one. And the point is this. Bishop takes bishop. White's got what they wanted. They've got the black square bishop off the board. Knight takes. But now we have an unprotected piece and an exposed king. And queen to a5 is check. White must do something to get out of check. Whatever they do, it makes no difference. Queen takes knight and white is just a whole piece up. This knight here is an extra piece. So yeah, that was a bit of a mistake. Clearly, if we go back to this position, however, and just pop the computer on for a sec, you can see that the computer's saying, look, just develop your knight as white or put your bishop on b2. And we've got a typical opening evaluation of plus a tiny bit for white for basically level. OK, two games done. Our third one, we have Ham against Carlson, Stockholm, 1973. And uh, White resigns on their 13th move. In fact, they played their 13th move and then resigned. So uh, let's go through it. And we've got a slightly odd move order here, but it doesn't matter. Let's turn the lines off. Don't need those for the minute. D4, D5, a slightly strange way of getting to the same thing. But I did tell you that it, it was pretty flexible. You could be quite flexible with this. G3, all very sensible stuff. And now F5 is played. Bishop to G2, Knight to F6, castles. Uh, bishop to E7 rather than D6. That has some logic to this because from this square against a fianchetto formation, the bishop is sort of biting on, biting on a rock here, biting on granite, as they say in chess. So bishop E7 is okay. Uh, C4 from white, castles from black, Knight to C3, c6 so we've got our stone wall in the middle of the board yay and the position is level ish fine 
Uh, queen to b3 from white. Okay, developing move. Queen to e8 from black. Do you remember I said that sometimes black will throw the queen over this way via this square? Here it comes. e3 and queen to h5. Okay, all good so far. Knight to e2, wanting to go here to attack the queen. So perfectly logical move. But g5, which not only starts an attack, but stops the knight coming to this square. Bishop to d2 played by white. Knight b to d7 from black. Uh, rook f to e1 from white. Knight to e4. Remember we said this move would come from black. Uh, knight to c3. And white immediately resigned. Played the move and then went, oh no, and resigned. So if you want to work out what black should play here that was the reason uh, for the resignation, then please do. Otherwise, I will show you what was played in the game in three, two, and one. And the point is this bishop is only defended by this knight. So in the game, g4 was played attacking the knight. And now the knight has to move. It has to go somewhere. And knight takes here, simply wins a piece. The queen will move. The knight will come back again and blacks a whole piece up. Um, oops. I would say if we go back to this position before the blunder from white, once again, have a look at the bar. It's basically a dead level game. But uh, you can see black's plan is going to play itself. The other knight's probably going to arrive. You're going to throw pawns forward. Maybe this at some point. Maybe the rook will come up and do this and you can attack up, uh, attack up this line. Okay, kind of cool. Um, okay, three games done. Let's get a new board. And our next one is... Dezila against Perez. I don't know if I pronounced the first name correctly, so uh, oops if I didn't. And this is in Uses in 1989. So again, resignation on move 13. So let's go through. Now, this time white plays knight f3. And I did say you can play the Dutch against most things. f5, okay. c4, knight f6, knight to c3, e6. The stone wall is beginning to get built. Here it is, d5 d4, c6, there it is, bishop to g2, bishop to d6, this time happy to bite on this sort of granite wall, okay, it's fine, yeah, it's not a problem, uh, knight to e5, very, very early from white in this game, remember, just because we get a nice square here, the trade-off is that white gets this one, that's the problem, these two pawns, a lot of strength here, but now they've abandoned any hope of defending e5, so, you know, that's what chess is, a trade-off of strengths and weaknesses, Knight b to d7, so two, uh, two pieces now attacking here, only one defender. So white plays bishop to f4, queen to e7 from black, e3 from white, castles from black, f3 from white, very strange moves being played here, but it's still perfectly, yeah, pretty level, should I say. And then a uh, move from black. There's a little bit odd in the Dutch stone wall, but taking a brick out of his own wall with D takes C4. Queen to E2 was played by white. Knight to D5 by black. Queen takes the pawn. Knight 7 to B6 attacking the queen. And the queen goes back to E2. Now at this point, the computer's saying there's a bit of an edge to black, but nothing that you, you know, resign the game for but after queen to e2 there is a bit of a problem oh okay so the computer must have seen this coming because it's not changed the evaluation uh, but the bit of a problem is this move g5 and if you remember a while ago um i did say that you might play this in the dutch stone wall but i didn't think that it would be trapping a bishop that's what you had in mind bishop's trapped by its own pawns and its knight it's got nowhere to go uh, and it's attacked by a black pawn and the pawn is defended, so this bishop is lost. Uh, yes, of course, I was being silly in this position, of course, because white has to retreat the queen. Yeah, of course, it's already, the computer's already worked out that there's a piece down. Uh, what should happen in this position? I'm guessing we don't play. Yeah, it's saying it's level. I would assume the correct move is knight takes pawn here. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, knight takes pawn. Knight takes pawn, and you've got a pretty level game look. And there's chess to be played. Okay, that's our... <coughs> excuse me, hope that didn't come through too loud. 
That's our fourth game. Our fifth one, we have Norman against Acton. This is the British Chess Championship for under 16s played in Oxford in 1967. Would you believe? Where does the good Dr. Dave find these games? OK, we've got a slightly strange move order again. So knight to f3, f5. Uh, let's turn the computer off for the minute. d4, knight to f6, g3, e6, bishop g2, d5, c4. You can play pawn takes pawn here, but you've ruined your own stone wall and you'll just make white's bishop a monster. So not probably a great idea to do it. c6 played, b3 played, bishop to e7 this time rather than d6. Castles castles bishop to b2 all standard developing moves queen to e8 there we go did say it was coming we've seen this knight b to d2 knight b to d7 queen to c2 knight to e4 there it goes the thematic move knight to e5 from white and um black is happy with knight takes pawn takes queen to h5 and in this very very level looking position white played f3 this move again that we saw in a previous game to attack the knight and there goes the eval bar to minus nine so um hopefully you might be able to cast your mind back to the previous game where we saw something very similar to this to work out what the crushing next move is for black so if you want to have a go uh, press pause otherwise i will show you how this uh, ends in three two and one and hopefully you remember the bishop coming to c5 with check and uh, there's not a whole lot you can do here. If you go king to h1, well, knight takes pawn is now mate because the bishop covers this square, the knight attacks the king, and it won't let me play pawn takes. It just flashes the king because, of course, that pawn is pinned. Ouchie. And I guess the computer will probably say you can keep the game going by sacrificing stupid amounts of pieces, but, I, I mean... Who wants to play moves like this? E3, bishop takes E3, uh, rook F2, bishop takes F2, king to F1. Uh, what comes next here? Probably put the bishop back, is it? Bishop to E3. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't this isn't pretty. Uh, minus 11. Uh, if you play pawn takes knight, we'll just play it for giggles. I imagine you're going to have pawn takes and suddenly this rook is in the game. Do you remember what I said would happen if you swapped here? The rook comes alive and that's sort of minus 20 odd. So yeah. Ouch. 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 Some very strong attacking possibilities in the Stonewall Dutch, uh, especially if white doesn't get it quite right. OK, we have one more game for this episode. And we are in Slovakia in 1998. Pajak against Midlarik. Again, I can only apologise if my accent and names are appalling. I don't speak Slovak. Here we go. D4, E6, C4, F5. So much more typical opening moves. Knight F3, Knight F6, G3, D5, Bishop to g2, c6, we have our stone wall. Castles, bishop to d6 in this game, b3, castles, bishop to b2, queen to e8, here she comes. Remember this pattern. Uh, and by the way, if white ever develops this bishop uh, via e3 and bishop here, then you have to be a bit more cautious about putting the queen here. So just bear that little point in mind, because the bishop's here, this square is reasonably safe for the queen. Uh, move nine, white, uh, sorry, yeah, we've had queen e8, white plays knight b to d2, queen to h5, here it comes her majesty, knight to e5 from white, knight b to d7 from black, Rook to c1 from white, bishop takes, 
uh, pawn takes a knight to g4. So with a not too subtle threat of queen to h2 checkmate. Um, now a computer actually says this is looking pretty good for white at the minute. The computer thinks this is good. Uh, the reason, of course, is that this bishop is currently pretty much entombed. Um, but the position is still very solid for black. There's no obvious loss immediately. Uh, knight to f3 by white to defend this square. And f4 from black, so why not? Let's go on the attack. Let's try and get this king open. Computer doesn't like it at all, but I can understand the logic of trying to get at the enemy king. Uh, pawn takes pawn by white. Pawn takes pawn here by black. Really going for it. Computer's suddenly saying, oh, this has got a bit more a bit more in it for black. H takes g3 from white. And now what has caused this bar to suddenly disappear and say mate in four. Hit pause now if you want to find the best move here for uh, black. Otherwise, I'll carry on in three, two, and one. And the point is that, remember, we wanted to play queen here because it will be checkmate. The knight is the only reason we can't, so logic dictates we play rook takes knight. Uh, let's let the computer just do a couple of the possibilities for us because uh, I'm feeling slightly lazy. So what's it saying is the best resistance? There's no good resistance here. It's still mate in three. Queen here, block the mate. Queen takes, rook to e1, and presumably then you're just going to play queen h2. King here, and there's about... 4,000 checkmates here. That's a checkmate. That's a checkmate. Let's play the pretty one with the rook. Why not? Ouch. Okay. So, yeah, uh, a nice game with the Dutch stone wall there. If we just go back to the midpoint here after queen e8, I guess it's going to say, yeah, I'm going to say I was going to suggest about plus three, plus four, give or take. Uh, what does the computer want black to do here? It wants black to develop first or knight to e4, knight here. Computer always seems to evaluate this as a bit of a problem for black because of this bishop. And I totally understand that. That is the one issue with the stone wall. So, OK. Right. That does it. That completes our trawl through Dr. Dave Regis's suggested openings repertoire. Well done, everyone, if you've watched every video. I'm going to do one more video and I'm just going to do a recap. So I'm simply going to fly through everything that's been recommended to us, just the first two or three moves in each variation, just as a just as a reminder or as a miniaturized version for anyone that just didn't have the time to watch the previous 36, 37, whatever it is, episodes. But uh, thank you very much for staying with us if you've been all the way through this. Hopefully it's been really, really helpful and will lead you to some great chess games. Thanks for watching. And oh, I should, of course, before I say goodbye, I should say good again, one more thank you to Dr. Dave Regis for letting us do this with his book. We are most grateful to you. All right. See you soon. Thanks for watching.